Welcome to Community Balance. I'm your host, Daniel Catan. I'm here at the Computer History Museum, located in Mountain View, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley. In this technological age, where computers, smartphones, tablets, and the internet are always at our fingertips, we often lose sight of the 2,000 years of advancement and refinement it took to create the devices around us. Join me as we travel back in time and view the evolution of the invention that has changed the course of human history forever. We'll begin here with this simple abacus a device still used for calculation by some in the Far East. The first computers were designed to make simple calculations. While the abacus was used by people throughout the ancient world, it was not until the mid-1800s when Charles Babbage, the first pioneer of computers, designed his difference engine, the first automatic computing engine. In Babbage's time, people would use a book of mathematical tables to perform calculations. These books were prone to errors because they were typeset by hand. Babbage, recognizing the potential for improved accuracy, designed this machine. Babbage never saw his brilliant design, which wasn't fully realized until 2002, a century and a half after its conception. The machine performs calculations and then prints them onto paper, creating a book of calculations. It uses gears, springs, levers, and rods to carry tens as they move upwards. While this is a truly impressive engineering masterpiece, it would take many innovations to create the first electronic calculator. With a population of 63 million Americans in the 1890s, counting the number of US citizens was no easy task, especially with no modern technology. To solve this problem, the United States government needed to take a new approach. They held a contest to create a device that would cut down on the amount of time the census would take. Herman Hollerith, an inventor, created a device that stored data on punched cards that would be read by a tabulating machine. His design won, and the census that some predicted would take 10 years to count took only one. However, punched cards were not a new invention. In fact, they were used to control textile machines as far back as the 18th century. What made Hollerith's invention groundbreaking was that he used the cards to store data. Hollerith formed a company called the Tabulating Machine Company, which later took on a new name and evolved into International Business Machines, or IBM. IBM dominated the market of data recording, and its punch cards were commonly used until the 1970s, when magnetic tapes became a cheaper and far more efficient solution for data storage. Eventually, IBM's machines could process over a thousand cards a minute. Engineers designed analog computers to use mechanical and electric parts to model problems. What separates them from today's digital computers is that digital computers use electronic switches. Behind me is an analog computer built by Arnold Nordseek in 1950 for a budget of just $700. This computer, called a differential analyzer, used electrical connections to solve equations where variables are changing all the time. The digital computers of the next stage of computing use numbers to model these problems as opposed to physical components. One of the most prominent reasons for innovation is our nation's need for technology for its national defense. ANIAC, a completely electronic and programmable calculating machine, was used by the United States military. The ANIAC engineers were tasked with calculating the angles necessary to accurately fire an artillery shell. The ANIAC computer was the first large-scale digital computer. Since it did not rely on mechanical parts to perform its calculations, it was much faster than an analog computer. ANIAC and digital computers like it were precursors to the modern calculator, capable of performing complex computations quickly. During the 1950s, Americans lived under the fear of attack from Soviet bombers. This is an operating console from SAGE. The military's bomber detection system used to detect a Soviet attack. Weighing in at a massive 250 tons, SAGE was the largest computer ever built. SAGE used information in real time from radar, weather reports, and other sources to detect enemy planes. Later on during the Cold War, 
a Soviet missile attack became the primary threat to national security, rendering SAGE obsolete. New defense systems built on SAGE's revolutionary advances as one of the first digital computers to make calculations in real time. Large computers like SAGE were extremely costly to purchase, making them out of reach for companies and consumers. These large machines were essentially only available to the government, which subsidized their development. Due to government subsidies for computer innovation in the military, computers became cost effective for corporate use as well. Businesses around the world recognized the potential value that computers could have by increasing efficiency and performing different tasks. At first, many small businesses were wary of adopting computers because computer companies had many different computer models, often with incompatible software, making expansion and having a unified system difficult. IBM set out to solve this problem, but by doing so, took a huge risk. IBM spent double its annual revenue to design its new computer line, named the System 360. Their risk paid off. The System 360 satisfied the need for a unified brand of hardware and software, becoming a smashing hit. Storage in the form we know today, where data is stored in a random order rather than sequentially, did not come to be until the mid-1950s with the introduction of IBM's RAM Act 350. It works like modern random access memory by accessing information based on an address as opposed to looking for information by going in order, speeding up the search process. Using its 50 disks spinning at 1200 RPM and its system of searching, RAMAC became the prototype for data storage of the future. The RAMAC 350 storage unit could hold the equivalent of 62,500 punch cards, 5 million characters. That's about one song on your iPhone. But storage is just part of computing. To create the computers of today, the calculating portion of a computer had to also evolve. While the use of computers grew in the workplace, the need for powerful computers for users such as government agencies and research institutes remained. Cray Research Incorporated, one of the biggest names in supercomputing, used innovative designs to create their supercomputers, each of which was wired by hand. In fact, this computer behind me has over 60 miles of wire. What set the Cray One apart from the other supercomputers of its time was its speed, circular shape, and cooling system. The Cray-1 supercomputer would remain unmatched in speed for five years following its 1976 introduction. Its circular shape made wire links shorter, allowing for complicated designs and easier repairs. Only after the technology of computers advanced and became more affordable did computers begin to be available to consumers. As tech companies began to realize the potential uses and profitability of computers and households, tech companies raced to get into the personal computer market. Prior to the late 70s, the majority of personal computers came in kits, making them inaccessible to anyone but engineers, like this Apple One next to me. The Apple One, designed by legendary engineer Steve Wozniak, was introduced by Wozniak and his partner, Steve Jobs, to the Homebrew Computer Club. Owners of an Apple One had to add their own display, keyboard, storage system, and power supply. The price for an Apple I in 1976? Just over $650. The price for an Apple I sold at auction to a collector in 2013? Over $650,000. It didn't take long for companies to market computers directly at consumers, making them more accessible by making them ready to use right out of the box. The Apple II was released just a year after the Apple I. It became one of the first computer models to achieve widespread success not only in schools and research facilities, but also in the homes of ordinary users, due to its floppy disk drive and a program written for the machine, VisiCalc, the first spreadsheet program ever made. The Apple II heralded the coming personal computer revolution. In 1996, two PhD students at Stanford University, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, had an idea for a new type of search engine. It would rank search results based on a website's relevance. In 1999, if you used Google to search the web, your search would have come here, to this Google server behind me. A server uses software to send results or information to the user. Without servers like this one, it would be impossible to find any information on the internet. Google's current search engine receives several hundred million searches a day, bringing information instantly to your fingertips. Google's custom hardware and software 
represents the culmination of hundreds of years of development in computing, spanning from simple arithmetic to sifting through massive amounts of data. It seems like computers know no limit.